Hey guys, welcome back to the second episode of the D22 solid axle swap. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff missing from the car, so I'll get straight into what I've been up to. Alrighty guys, so I've got my air intake um, off, so that includes the snorkel and air box and filter. Um, I get a lot of questions about my air box and snorkel. Um, so I made them maybe two years ago out of a bit of three inch stainless and some sheet metal stainless. And then I bought uh, a diff breather set that also does you know, transfer case gearbox and winch. Um, so I welded that in here, then drilled the holes in the bottom and put some grommets in and then routed the hoses up through there. I've also got a grommet where the air temperature sensor goes in. Um, and then down in the bottom corner there that you can't really see, um, there's a little drain if I need to wash it out. Um, and then over here, I've got the PCV um, on a barb fitting just so I can route my catch can into the air intake um, post filter. So the filter sits here, your PCV goes on after the filter. Um, so the lid is polycarbonate, um, just kind of like clear acrylic. You could probably get away with anything. Um, doesn't have to be see-through either. I just like being able to check um, how dirty the air box was. Um, and then I ran um, some nut certs around the edges, tried to evenly space them, but they're a little bit wonky. Um, and then some foam tape. So it's foam on one side and then it's got adhesive on the backing. And I just laid that down around the edges and then you put your polycarb on top, drill some holes through it and then you get your little squash plate on top of that and then put your bolts through and it'll squash your polycarb down onto that foam and create a good seal. I never had any issues with this um, but I think it might get in the way of my new setup. Um, and here's the filter that I was running. So it's a K&N, uh, I think it's about a nine inch filter um, with a extra sock on top. So the sock helps with dust and water um, and it just makes your filter last that little bit longer. Um, and then my snorkel, just basic three inch, nothing too crazy about that. So I forgot to mention, this is the base plate um, for the air box. This mounts into the factory air box holes that are in the Navara and uh, any, I think I just took up any captive nuts that were in the area. Um, so I, I think I only had to put in one nut cert in the whole thing, um, which is right here. The rest are all from the factory air box system. So basically what I did with this air box uh, bracket was got a bit of um, right angle and just basically went around the perimeter of it um, front and back and then did a little bit extra around the sides just to stop that lateral movement. Um, smothered a bit of sicker flex along the bottom of it so it wasn't metal on metal, um, just gave it a little bit of a cushion. Um, and it, you know, it worked pretty good. I, I couldn't hear it rattling or anything. Um, means you don't have to actually tie down the air box um, with any bolts or anything. It sort of just sits there under its own weight uh, with the snorkel and uh, air intake sort of holding it in place. Um, and it doesn't, you know, I didn't rattle around too much, so that worked out a treat.
What is up, guys? Finally got some time to work on the nav, so I'll show you guys where I'm up to. Engine's out. We've got plenty of room to get on the inside of the engine bay, get in there, do welding, whatnot. Uh, we got the diff ready to strip. I'm hoping to do that soon so I can get welding on that. We have completely picked clean this chassis rail, rounded it all back, all the paint's gone, it's ready to weld. Got the brackets there and there, so we'll go through those brackets soon. Um, hoping to pick up some gas tonight so we can get to welding on the weekend. So hopefully I can get some stuff happening pretty soon. So onto the brackets. So you've all been hammering me with questions about the kit. Um, so we're gonna go through it now, real excited. So this kit is from Crawl Customs. He's a fabricator out of Roma and he has done all the design, the research to actually make this kit and develop it so that you know, you just buy the kit, put it in yourself. Um, so all I've got here is the brackets that get welded in. I haven't got any steering links. Um, I supplied the diff and cruiser arms, um, so we'll go through that. But it's all six mil steel, it's absolutely chonking. It's really well built, everything looks really tough. So these are actually the radius arm mounts. So you see Bush goes through there. He's designed it so that it's as easy to sash your car as it could be. So these holes here actually take up body mounts, so they're self-locating, you don't have to measure stuff, you whack it up there, whack the bolts in, and just hot glue with the welder. Um, so it's, it's really well made, it's awesome. So this is radius arm mount, so you got one of those for each side. These here are the coil towers, so these, obviously very, very stonk and they're huge. Um, I've opted for 12 inch coils. I think the, the kit is designed for 10s. Um, so mine are just a little bit taller than what the others would be. Um, but I think other than that, they're the same. Um, then we've got this, which I think is a pan hard mount. So this will go on the driver side, I'm pretty sure, um, near the steering box. These are some sort of diff mount. Um, I'd say these are where the radius arms mount to, so these wrap around the diff, and your radius arm goes through that. We've got lots of little pieces um, here, coil over tabs, bump stops, hydro can mounts. Um, that's pretty well it. Then we've got the, this is the diff laminate. So just to strengthen it up, I don't think you'd get it engineered without these. Um, I think engineers love to see this stuff. Um, and then over here, just another diff mount. I think that's for um, the other end of the pan hard. So all of this, um, I can't give you guys a price because it's not, it's not available yet publicly. So you can't buy it just yet. You'll have to go follow his Facebook page. I'm sure he'll make posts on progress and stuff. Um, and you can also check out, he's got some photos up there of the monster. Awesome rig, um, he's got a four link in the rear on coilovers and now he's doing the sass, so it's really impressive what he's done. Love the kit, keen to get it in. Um, but yeah, not available yet, just keep an eye out. So onto the rear end. So this is my uh, Navara diff. Um, there's nothing really wrong with the rear diffs on Navaras. I think they hold up pretty good. Um, but I figured if I'm changing the front one and I want to do a custom setup in the rear, it's not really much more effort to go to to actually change the diff and mount all my brackets onto that one. Um, so I've got my GU diff over there, um, matching ratios with the front one. Um, main benefit of using a GU diff up the rear is that it'll match my wheel track for the front diff um, and I'll also get disc brakes on the rear end instead of drums. Um, other than that, I don't think there's anything too special about the GU diffs, um, but I figured while I'm here. Um, so the setup will be a triangulated four link, hopefully, um, running just your standard patrol suspension, so coils and shocks, um, and that way I can buy stuff second hand, or if something breaks, I've always got, you know, marketplace, everyone's always selling patrol gear. Um, rather than running something custom, and then I have to order it and wait for it when I break something. Um, so that's the plan for it anyway. So we'll see how that goes after I do the SAS. We got gas and we've got our welder. So I've got to set up the MIG and then we're ready to start tacking. 
Um, but first, I'm just going to spray a little bit of zinc primer on, along the chassis rail, um, just to give it a little bit of protection, just because that's what Matt um, from Crawl Customs said, um, because you don't actually have to fully weld around the chassis laminate or fish plate. Um, you just have to stitch weld it on there. So a little bit of paint behind there just to keep it more rust proof. <laughs> Alright guys, so this is the welder that I'll be using. Um, I don't really know too much about it. It's not the welder that I use at work. Um, it's just a spare one that we had in the workshop. So I get to borrow it. Um, it's even got four wheel drive, which is... Um, so I'm gonna have to have a little practice run because I'm not used to the adjustment style on this. I usually have um, multiple knobs up top which control um, four different things and this has got two knobs that control four different things together so I think the volts is uh, also connected to the wire speed and uh, I'm not too sure what this one on the left is but I think that's got to do with heat or I don't know I'll figure it out um, so I'll have to do a little bit of practice So we've got our first bit of chassis fish plate on there. Um, I love the look of it, it looks, looks so tough. Like this is the first time I've done any modification to this like magnitude, like I haven't really welded anything onto my cars before. So this is bloody awesome, it's really exciting, um, really nerve wracking too, like welding stuff to your chassis. Um, I'm going to end the episode here, I don't know, um, obviously I didn't get much welding done in this like I planned to. Um, but a lot of you guys really wanted to see this next episode um, so I sort of had to toss up whether to make the episode a bit longer and get more in it and then you guys have to wait longer for it to come out or to get this video done um, with what I've got at the moment and then get it out to you guys so if you guys want to wait a bit longer and I'll get more in the videos just let me know but it sounds like you guys want to see them as soon as possible as stuff's happening um, so I'll try and make that happen but I'll see you guys in the next episode. I'll uh, tack the other side on and then I'll show you guys how I fully weld this through. And then hopefully next episode we actually get on to disassembling the diff like I said I would last episode. Um, and then maybe start looking at tacking in some of the other brackets. So let me know what you guys want to see and what you enjoy watching. Um, and I'll try and put those in the next videos and explain 
obviously how this all works. Um, if you guys want to see more regular updates of what I'm getting up to in between videos, go check out my Instagram um, and I usually post a little bit of what's happening there um, between videos. So I'll see you guys in the next video.